Well, guys, I have a bit of an interesting, fun story for you. It seems that my trusty, rusty camera tripod has finally broken, so I'm unable to mount my good digital camera anywhere, and uh, it's going to hamper my ability to make some of these reviews that I've had planned over the next few days. So I've got kind of a temporary setup going on here in my bedroom, um, which sucks because the lighting sucks. I'm using my webcam since I don't have any way of mounting my better camera in this area. And uh, there's going to be ambient noise that I can't quite account for. It's not ideal. Now, granted, my regular setup isn't ideal either. It's something that I'm working on. Just wanted to let you guys know why everything was suddenly different and objectively worse than it usually is. That said, what I want to talk about with you guys today is a movie that I just got the chance to see earlier today. And if you've read the title of the video, you know exactly what it is. Yes, I did go today to see Captain America 3, Captain America Civil War, and I just could not help but talk about it with you guys because I had a lot of fun seeing it. Now just to get it out there, I am not going to be drawing any comparisons between this movie and Batman vs Superman despite the fact that both of these movies are technically superhero vs superhero movies. Literally the only comparison that I am going to make is that while I thought that movie was just okay, this movie was anything but. And as I do want this review to be entirely spoiler free, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to talk all that much about the specifics in this movie, and therefore I'm not going to be able to talk about the movie all that much. I will say, just like pretty much all of these Marvel movies we've ever gotten, the characterization is spot on, the character acting is spot on, all the actors are great, they're all cast very, very well. The roles of Captain America, of Iron Man, of the Winter Soldier, who are technically speaking the most important characters in this movie, are all handled expertly well of course, and new characters such as Ant-Man and Spider-Man and the Black Panther, who are either getting their Marvel Cinematic Universe de debut here in this movie, or are for the first time interacting with some of these other characters in a movie, all mesh very well, they're all spectacular and a whole lot of fun to see. For anyone out there who is a huge Spider-Man fan just like I am, there is absolutely nothing to worry about. This new Spider-Man is, as many people have been saying, probably the best version of Spider-Man we've gotten in a movie so far. He's played by a young kid, and he feels like a young kid, and yet he is able to carry the part, uh, the actor is, rather not the character himself, the actor is able to carry the part so convincingly, not once did I ever not feel like this kid was Spider-Man, and he worked as Spider-Man, and I could not be happier with the way that Spider-Man turned out in this movie, and he gets a lot more interaction with other characters here than the trailers would lead you to believe. So keep that in mind going in. If Spider-Man is something that you feel is either going to make or break this movie for you, keep in mind that this version of Spider-Man is great, and he gets a decent amount of screen time, so that might be incentive enough for you to go. And the character of Black Panther, as I mentioned here, also gets his Marvel Cinematic Universe debut, and Black Panther is always a character that I've been a huge fan of. I think he's one of the coolest Avengers, and they do him such justice here in this movie, which, in addition to everything else that it does, is kind of the origin of him as a superhero as well, and it's handled very, very well, and I really enjoyed seeing it. The actor who played him, whose name I do not remember, I am on my computer, so I can look that up. I swear, I really did look all this up before actually making the review. I just don't remember. Chadwick Boseman. Chadwick Boseman. He was absolutely fantastic. Just an absolute delight in every single scene that he was in. His final scene, in the costume anyway, towards the end of this movie, was just such a subtle and expertly handled scene. It made, I think, the entire movie for me. But, of course, first and foremost, this movie was about a conflict between the heroes. A civil war of sorts, hence the name. And it all stems from the fact that after the incident in Age of Ultron, where Ultron literally lifted a city into the sky so that he could drop it on the earth and kill everybody, governments of the world are starting to think that maybe these powered people, the, the Avengers included, should all be regulated and dealt with more strictly than they are now. That, in the case of the Avengers anyway, there should be some kind of oversight here. Because despite the fact that the Avengers were able to save the world during the Ultron Crisis, people still died. A lot of people still died. A lot of people with, with families who loved them, who now miss them, and blame the only people who are left to blame, the Avengers, which Technically, it is kind of their fault. And first and foremost, the Ultron incident is Iron Man's fault, so he is all for this oversight program, but Captain America believes that they should be making their own decisions, that they should be overseeing themselves, because they, themselves personally, 
are the people that they can trust the most. And what's great about this, and I'm not going to get into spoilers, everything I've said so far is in the trailers. What's great about this is neither side is made a straw man. Both sides are given time to develop their arguments and make their points, and they're both kind of right and kind of wrong at the same time. Everything that either side says is entirely valid. And it makes this whole Team Cap versus Team Iron Man thing that's been leaking into the advertisements all the sillier. Because once you actually get in there to watch the movie, it's clear that the point isn't that one team is more right than the other. The point is that neither of them is right. This movie is supposed to get you thinking about that. And it does a fantastic job of it. Just the opening action scene of this movie, the conclusion to that action scene, is more than enough to get you thinking about the ramifications of what it is that the Avengers do. And I'm just going to leave it at that. It's absolutely fantastic. But there is an underlying plot of this movie. There is a villain to this movie who is kind of manipulating events. I won't say how. And one of the main complaints that I've heard about this movie, when people actually do complain about this movie, is that the villain seems kind of ineffectual, like he doesn't really get much done. That's absolutely not true. His machinations are always present throughout this entire movie. A majority of the conflict in this movie would not have escalated nearly as quickly as it did had it not been for this guy's background manipulations. And then there is this big reveal at the end about the, I'll say, history of one of the characters, something that they knew as the truth is entirely recontextualized, and it is not only a heartbreaking scene, but it just brings all of the emotions home that have been building up throughout this entire movie. And the action scenes in this movie, I haven't even talked about them yet, they're absolutely spectacular, top-notch, as we've come to expect from Marvel Studios. During the fight between the heroes, the big fight that we've seen built up in all the trailers, everybody gets some fantastic moments to shine. Everybody's character comes through. There's not a single exchange during that conflict that feels forced, just to further the narrative. It all just kind of develops naturally the way you would expect it to. It was just, it was a whole lot of fun. And while it, it hurt to see those people fighting each other, it was still exciting and a lot of fun to watch. And till something happens. I'm not going to say what that something is because again, no spoilers, but let's just say it's a pretty big deal. If I had to complain about anything in this movie, and this is just a minor nitpick, there is a villain, a relatively prominent Captain America villain, who is present at the very beginning of this movie for the opening action scene, who just disappears after that. He's not in the rest of the movie at all, and I had kind of been under the assumption that he was the main villain of this movie, and I feel like he didn't get as much screen time as he needed to to really justify him being here. But I also get the sense that they're waiting to use him somewhere else down the line, so it's not a genuine complaint, it's just a nitpick. In fact, any of the complaints I can think of regarding this movie are just minor nitpicks. I can't think of a genuine complaint to make about this movie. There was so much packed into the plot of this movie, and yet the plot of this movie never felt bogged down by that, and you never felt lost in it. Everything made sense, everything developed naturally from the narrative, the direction was good, the cinematography was good. This was overall a fantastic movie. Now, as I mentioned back in my Batman vs. Superman review, I do rate movies on a scale of 0 to 10, Zero being something that never should have been made in the first place. It offers nothing positive to society. And a 10 being something that I cannot possibly imagine ever being a better representative of itself than it already is. And in that case, this movie is a 10. But guys, if you have seen this movie, what did you think of it? Of course, please, no spoilers in the comment section down below. <laughs> Either way, this has been AJ22, and I will talk to you guys later.